Hello Pisces, welcome to Lotus Heart Tarot. I'm so happy to have you here. We're gonna dive right in um, for what will probably be a pretty short reading. We'll just see how it goes. Um, but as you may remember from yesterday, I've been a bit under the weather and it is sort of hard for me to talk. Um, so <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Anyway, um, if you are someone who regularly watches, um, it has subscribed, comments, likes, shares. I just want to say thank you so much. I deeply appreciate your support. If you're someone new to the channel and this is your first time here, I'm usually a lot more energetic than this. <laughs> I am under the weather. Um, but welcome, welcome to this space. I'm very happy to have you here. Just keep in mind, all of you, that this is a general reading and that um, just take what resonates and leave the rest, right? So we're going to get a look at what's coming in the near future. So this is all the near future energy, all right? <clears throat> okay. Okay. You know... There is definitely a cycle closing out here in your energy, Pisces, and there definitely is something new happening. Um, I feel like you are in separation from someone. I feel like they have, um, well, trauma is so messy, right? We, it's not really self-contained, you know, if I've, if I've experienced trauma and I have not done the work to heal myself, then my trauma spills out onto you, you know, um. So there's kind of this energy of having having taken a time out or gone into separation with someone where there is trauma involved. I feel like, you know, this energy came up yesterday in the um, you and them reading with the Knight of Wands, like you gave your, your heart to a Knight of Wands. Um, and it's showing up again here. And it is really... Um, It's giving me this vibe that, um, you know, someone who in the past just couldn't really show up for you, Pisces. I feel like either you're healing from this and you're vibrationally aligning with a different kind of energy. It may be that you have historically had a pattern of linking up with people like this, or it may have just been the one person. Um, but I feel like your vibrational alignment is changing. I feel like you have chosen anytime we choose to learn through something, anytime we choose to see the gift in something or to, you know, look back and say, wow, how has this changed me for the better? You know, we come to a place of peace and acceptance with it, which automatically helps us to heal and automatically kind of raises our vibration. And so I feel like that is the energy of what you've been doing. I feel like, I don't know if this past person is vibrationally aligning to your new vibration um, or if your vibrational alignment is raising you above these experiences. And you know how they, this, um, I don't know what this thing is called, um, but they go cut and they snap it shut like this could be the end of some kind of cycle that has been really painful and it may not just be that you were dealing you have in the past dealt with people who had experienced trauma who were unreliable because of the trauma it may be a result of your own trauma that you that you um accepted that kind of energy or that you were attracted to that kind of energy even we're gonna dive deeper um, there's a huge energy of healing and a shift in vibration or a shift in what we're aligned to now. And wow. Vibrational alignment is being clarified by mystery, tears, and ready. And for me, this energy is like, we don't know, you know, who is coming towards you or what is coming towards you. 
Oh boy, this is loaded. This is loaded, loaded, loaded. So you have tests on the bottom of the deck and you know, <clears throat> for some of you, it may be that the past person comes back but they are not a vibrational alignment to you. And you know, it's like, are you going to accept this energy? Are you going to allow them back? Are you going to accept that? Or are in kind of, you know, if you're going to do that, you have to sort of reduce yourself. You have to sort of compromise your own, what you have worked for. Or it can be where someone shows up and they're displaying the same kind of energy or they're giving you the same kind of vibe or they have displayed the same kind of red flags. And it's like, am I going to accept them? But for others of you, I honestly get that there is a past person here. You see these tears um, who had experienced trauma and it's almost as if, you know, the universe put, it divinely intervenes, right? The universe cannot change someone's free will choice the universe cannot make someone decide to heal. The universe cannot, but the universe can put tests in your path. The universe can put towers in your path. And it can be where, it may be a mystery to you what this person has experienced in, in their absence from you. I get literally the energy of studying. Um, and this can be studying life's mysteries or studying, like actually stopping and see how he's all by himself in this room, in this particular card. He's all by himself. It's like almost kind of a hermit energy where it's like taking oneself out of a certain environment in order to contemplate, in order to study, in order to ask myself, what do I believe? you know, um, what, why am I living this kind of life? Is this the kind of life I even want to live? It, it's, it's like asking myself these questions and really looking for answers, possibly in religion, possibly in spiritual studies, possibly in books or, and it could be YouTube videos, it could be anything, but I really get this energy of studying, of looking, of finally saying, you know, no more. Like, if this cycle is going to change, it's going to change because of the actions that I take. Because I decide that it won't, that I won't tolerate it. Anyway, it seems like there's something here where, um... Something's getting the green light. Something is getting, it's ready either to come back together or you are ready to start a new cycle um, that takes you away from these situations or these kinds of people. What is the player? Mm. Someone who becomes overwhelmed when um, making future plans. Um, you know, it's like, uh, we're fine until we start asking more of the relationship or until we start, um, everything is connected. Um, it's like the minute we start talking or the minute we start, it could even be this person's idea with a light bulb, but it's like, and I think they really do want this, but I feel that they just start overthinking and they become really super overwhelmed anytime, you know, kind of plans are being made or something more is going to be expected of them or the situation. Yeah, remember how I said, um, You know, God, when someone who has a secure attachment deals with someone who's avoidant or anxious, 
and that person bolts or that person clings or that person they have a secure response they say oh okay obviously you need some time you need some space you need to you know figure things out for yourself when someone also has trauma that has caused them to have an attachment style that is not secure they will a lot of times you know kind of strategize how to get someone back or how to i don't want to say manipulate the situation but that's sort of how i feel it's like you know sort of maybe i'll try to make them jealous maybe i'll try to this maybe i'll try to that you know what i mean um and it's kind of one of those things where it's like that's not the highest and best representation of who you are, or it's not the highest and best representation of who they are, but it's the side that you bring out in each other. It's like this, you know, I run, I get anxious, you know, you run, I get anxious kind of energy or um, you are avoidant and so am I. And so I'm not, I'm not maybe as, as avoidant or dismissive avoidant or whatever as you are, but then you being avoidant causes that kind of reaction in me. And, um, and, or it can be that, you know, this person is emotionally unavailable and your trauma is emotional neglect. And so when it comes to this situation, Part of the reason why you're drawn to it or you're attracted to it or you're entertaining it or you're giving it so much of yourself and your energy is that it is a reflection you're trying to get that love from some you know you're trying to prove your worthiness of being lovable by kind of seeking it in places where it's not really available and trying to change their mind. And that doesn't work because people's rejection of you or emotional neglect of you is not a reflection of you or your worthiness. I think we've established many times on this channel how our worthiness, uh, our worthiness period point blank is established in the fact that you are living, you are breathing, you are a miracle. You're made of stardust. You are the universe experiencing itself. You are, you are worthy. There isn't a doubt. There isn't a question. This idea that we might not be worthy is, is a perspective. It's a human thought. It's not real. It doesn't really exist. We are worthy. Okay. And so that rejection, that, um, neglect, that I don't show up for you energy is not a reflection of your worthiness. It is a reflection of that a person's ability to love, to connect um, through their own trauma, through their own situation. So it feels like a situation where you've learned a lot from a past relationship, whether it is this past relationship coming back together or not, I can't really say for sure, but it feels like maybe this past relationship was a real catalyst, a real break open moment for you to be able to really, I don't know, see all the moving parts like within yourself, within the connection, within that person, which once we start to see those things, we can heal. You know, we can put words to it. We can bring a sense of understanding to it. We can bring a sense of acceptance to it. But I do feel either this person is coming back around, like is vibrationally aligning with you. We had all those sixes yesterday, I believe, in our reading. Um, could have been the day before. I just remember a lot of sixes. And... Um, We're either vibrationally aligning with a past situation that really means a lot to us or we're vibrationally aligning with a new experience in love, you know. Um, I 
What are we doing with here? Spirit? Wow, yeah, see? Wow. This is coming in the near future, you guys. Like, that's what I asked. That's what I was meditating on. Um, you have the Four of Wands and the Queen of Pentacles with the Nine of Swords on the bottom of the deck. There's an energy of calling down your manifestation. And, you know, when you start to make choices that reflect that you understand your worthiness, that you understand your inherent worthiness, you start, you know, doing things like self-care, investing in yourself, holding boundaries and standards for yourself, the universe responds. The universe is like, oh, they finally figured out that they are worthy of higher and better things. And then they start bringing it in. And the Four of Wands is where our manifestations come into real life. So there may have even been something that you were manifesting a lot, but you may have been manifesting it even from a space of fear or a space of trauma or a space of brokenness of, I don't want to be alone. I want companionship. I want love. Not from a space of, I know I'm worthy. I know I deserve it. There's a huge vibrational difference in that. And this, this vibration attracts something very different than this vibration attracts, right? Um, so, you know, when you're talking the Queen of Pentacles, it's like something you may be receiving in real life. Like, the, both of these cards talk about real life. Like, something coming down into the material world. Yeah, it's coming fast, you guys. It's coming friggin' fast. You have the Knight of Swords, and then you have the Devil with the Three of Cups. Let's look at this. With the Hermit. Oh, my God. This is... Um, some of you do have a past person coming back. Someone who acted recklessly. Someone who was really stuck, possibly to a third-party situation or to some type of... Um, you know, their family, a belief system, a limiting belief system, something that was really keeping them stuck. But with the hermit, there is this energy of going off and being by ourselves and um, figuring it out. The devil is being clarified by the four of swords and the two of swords dancing with the seven of, sword, of pentacles here. Um, there is just this energy of stagnancy that's tied to a lack of healing or a need to heal. Um, and this is like, you know how I said with that testing card, this person is all by themselves. These are all by yourself energies. You have the hermit on the bottom of the deck and the two of swords and the four of swords and the seven of pentacles. These are, these are energies where it's like, it's kind of bringing myself into alignment. It's kind of taking inventory on what I'm trying to grow what I'm trying to invest in in my life. Where do I want my life to go? What do I want to, what seeds do I want to plant? What do I want to come to fruition? And, you know, it can be, especially with these swords, all these swords on top of this three of cups and this double energy, that I've been avoiding cutting something out of my life or I've been avoiding healing for something or I've been avoiding even admitting something, looking at something, recognizing something. Um, but with the Hermit and the Seven of Pentacles, there's a very distinct energy here of, you know, it's time for me to really look at what what my long-term goals are, kind of, and what where my wish fulfillment is coming from. What is ultimately going to make me happy? Is it staying on this path? Or, you know, and with this Knight of Swords, there's lightning all around him, which really gives me the sense of the Tower card and some huge kind of awakening or aha moment or some moment of clarity that really um, makes someone want to come forward and speak their truth. Remember that testing card, though. You need them to do more than say, aha, I figured it out and come forward and speak their truth. You need to see the actions because this is someone who gets overwhelmed whenever we start to make a plan. This is someone who retreats into their own sort of world when they're sort of mm, called out on a deeper level. You know, the Three of Cups is a very superficial, fun kind of level. It's like, as long as life is just fun and nobody's asking too much of me and whatever, I'm cool, I can go along with it. And that's why I'm stuck here. And that's that player energy of being very superficial. 
But then when I, there's emotion involved, when I'm investing, when I'm talking about my wish fulfillment with the hermit energy, um, that, that is where I get, have gotten overwhelmed in the past. And so it takes much more than coming in quickly and speaking some words. It, it, it requires, um, action. It requires, which the, the Knight of Swords is action, right? But it's, it's, it's over time, action over time, I feel like, which is a deeper energy than the Knight of Swords. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is someone who is facing their inability to regulate their own emotions be due to some kind of trauma and the cycle that needs to complete with the world card energy and that maybe they are completing it. Wow, with the high priestess. I think, you know, this can, um, underneath the deck, wow, underneath the high priestess is the hangman. Um, wow, with underneath that is the ace of wands. So it could be this influence um, of you, or it could be, you know, it could be their desire to have a new beginning with you that is making them go through this process. But it can also be the influence of the way you live your life and the way you process things affecting this person and showing this person that there is another way to do things other than the way that they have done things in the past. They may also know that you had trauma and that you at one time had difficulty regulating your own emotions and they may have seen the way that you closed out that cycle and they may be using it as a model for themselves. This person, you have justice on the bottom of the deck. This person knows that things have not been fair or things, they have not done things right. They have not been just in their behavior or their words or their actions or their deeds. And, you know, with the five of wands and the two of cups, you know, there's just this energy of wanting to release the barriers that stand in the way of being able to connect in a healthy healing relationship. Um, and you have the 10 of wands and the six of wands in reverse. There's so many wands here. Some of you are really dealing with a fire sign. Um, you also have Libra here. Uh, but you know, with the, um, 10 of wands and the six of wands, this is kind of like, you know, when you go out and you're having a good time, like, I, I don't know, I relate this to college. Like when I was in college, I really looked forward to the weekends. I, I, you know, I went to a school with a football team and like, you know, I don't want to say we were good, but we were halfway decent. We won some games, you know, and it was fun and we got to go for free. So that was even funner. Um, and we had our little traditions that we did anyway. Um, but when, you know, as the semester wears on or as the year wears on, you know, you start to get tired and then sometimes you're like, man, do I really want to go? I'm just beat. I'm tired. Like, it's hard to be socially on. It's hard to be fun me all the time or it's hard to be the person that knows the right thing to say or has that quick witty comeback all the time, you know? Um, it, it becomes a burden to have that much attention on you, you know, to be out in the public eye or, you know, the six of wands is kind of, it can be a very superficial energy. And with the 10 of wands, it is a burden something. And it's like, I want to, it, it's like beyond the fact that I want to focus on a real relationship that contributes to my health and well-being, my soft place to fall, my comfort, my security, um, you know, someone that I can heal with, someone that I can go through life with. I also don't want to have the pressure and the burden of continuously having to be on or having to be this person or this person that's expected of me. And, you know, with the justice card, there's an acknowledgement of, you know, <laughs> K 
kind of the imbalance of the five of wands. It's like, you know, I was blocking this relationship or I was blocking this energy for so long because in order to be able to like give to this or in order to be able to maintain this or whatever this is, okay, it's some kind of superficial outlet that has become burdensome. It can be a relationship where someone gives that person a lot of attention or they receive attention for the whatever they're in or whatever this is. Um, but it, it's the thing that created this need to block this healthier, you know, relationship, long lasting. You know, the two of cups is, you know, something that is symbiotic. It's something that is good for both people. It is something that you know, it strengthens you and contributes in a positive way to your life. This is very like, in the moment, it could be fun. In the moment, it strokes your ego. But as far as like deep nurturing energy, you're not getting it here, you know? And it's kind of like my need for this or my need to maintain this or my need to hold on to this is what created the imbalance. It's what created the um unjust energy and it's an acknowledgement of that and an acknowledgement that you know I have to let this barrier go I have to let this energy go in order to be able to meet this person halfway in order to balance things out you know in order to show up in a right energy for this relationship all right guys it's getting really hard for me to talk I need to go lay down I'm gonna get you some messages and um, I'll see you maybe tomorrow, hopefully. All right. I think I am getting a little bit better. Um, if you're dealing with a water sign, I see life differently now. You came closer than anyone. I can't be with you. If you're dealing with a fire sign, I want to tell you how I feel. I am recovering. I'm so attracted to you. I couldn't let you get close to me. You don't know how hard it was to let you go. If you're dealing with um, an earth sign, I hide my feelings. Does this situation align with your values and morals? I want to make amends. And if you're dealing with an air sign... I am waiting patiently. I don't know how to feel. I remember every detail of that day and your intellect arouses me. Wow, well Pisces, this is what I have for you. I really hope it helps. Um, thanks for hanging out with me while I'm not feeling very good. <laughs> um, I send you off with all my very best. Always, always, always. Bye-bye, guys. <laughs>